Hello, good people, and welcome to another episode of Money Matters with Excel. Here, we share tips and tricks on how you can create your own Excel templates to help you manage your finances and accounts. So in this episode, we want to take a look at how to create a simple yet dynamic general and trial balance template. I'm sure this will come in handy for most accountants, but even if you are not an accountant, you can use the tool to monitor movements for some of the key accounts that you manage in your small business. So let's get to it and just take this through step by step. Okay, so let's begin with a walkthrough of the typical layout of a journal and a trial balance. Now, this is not cast in stone, but we normally require the journal entry number, which is basically to help us separate transactions from each other. Because in the journal, we have different debits and credits representing a transaction. The journal entry number helps you batch or separate the entries. So we have that here. Okay. And sometimes you can also put in the account code, right? You could also substitute that with the account name directly, the ones that you are posting into. So we have the account code here. Then we have our date of entry. Okay. And then these two columns will now have our debits and credits. In some layouts, they are in one column stacked on each other, but you can also adopt this style. This means that you can't enter on the same line. Then if you want to capture the account name too, we can bring a lookup here to bring the account code that you've entered earlier and a little description to help you relate to what you have entered in the journal. So this is a typical layout. For this purpose, the entries in green are going to be special inputs or formulas and then the ones in blue are the ones that you enter directly okay so from here we will now have our trial balance the trial balance has the account numbers okay then the corresponding account names you have the option to bring in your beginning trial balance okay from a previous year then we are going to calculate the total movements on the debit side and then the credit side which will now feed into our final trial balance. We realize that you could use this template to also run your year-end adjustments as well. Okay, so let's start from scratch. Now, we are starting with just these three transactions, but what we want to do is to have an account code that is a drop-down, allowing us to pick instead of directly inputting the account code. You know, this gives us the advantage of avoiding errors in our input. So to do that, it will be helpful if you start off by converting this whole data set into a table. Okay, even though it looks like a table, in Excel, a table is a structured object allowing you to organize and analyze related data. Okay, so we are going to insert a table by going to insert table or you could do a control T directly. Now, the advantage is that if you enter new transactions, this will automatically expand and your formulas will expand as well. Okay, so I'll click OK. Now, this is a table. I know it's a table because now there's a table design here. I can name this journal. Okay. Okay, so we have this in place. Now, let's bring in our account codes. This is going to be done with data validation or what we know as a drop down. I can just highlight this with a down black arrow. Content here is selected. This way, with new rows in the table, the data validation will still apply. So I'll go to data, right? In the data tools group, you find the data validation icon here. So I'll click on it. Now it allows me to put in any value whole number and all these. We usually want a list, okay? So the list here is going to be the source where our account codes are in the trial balance. So I'll select this, go to the trial balance. This is already a table, so I can also stand here and then with a down black arrow, select this. Okay, so my original reference is B3 to B40 and I'm going to click OK. Now, after doing this, you realize that I just have account codes which is not very intuitive because unless I've memorized the account codes, it's very difficult to know which account codes relates to which account name. 
So what we are going to do is to modify the data validation in such a way that we can see the account codes and account names side by side. That way we can directly choose the account codes we are sure relates to the account name that we need. Okay, so to do that, we'll do a little modification. So what we'll do here is that in the original source, which is the account number, okay, this is the original source. It's already a table, as I mentioned. Table design is here. It will help if you name it TB to make it easier for you to reference. Okay, so to make this work, we are going to highlight this particular column in our TB, okay, and name it. So we are basically naming a range in the table. This way we can use the name in our data validation. Okay, so while this is highlighted, I can directly put the name here, make sure the whole column is selected, or you can go to Formulas Name Manager and then start a new name over here and give it a name. I prefer the direct way. So while this is selected, I'll go in here and then call this account. What this means is that if I come and I select accounts, this entire range is selected. If I bring in new accounts, so as an example, I put in 10,000. Okay, this now is part of my account. Okay, it can now show in the data validation. Okay, so that's the advantage of using tables and the name range. So now that I have done this, it means that I can come and modify my original data validation. So I'll select it again, go to data, okay and then the data tools group instead of the original source which references the generic um, data range okay i'm going to put in equal to account here which is the name i just used okay so let's test and see i still see my account code which is fine now to see the two account code and account name what we are going to do is that we'll come to formless then in the name manager, you see that your account is here. We are going to edit this. So edit it. And then you realize that currently it's pointing to just the account number. All you need to do is just hold the shift and then the right arrow to extend it to the second column. Right. So now instead of just referencing one column, you are referencing two columns into your data validation. So that's a little workaround. Now, if I click OK, and I click close, okay, come to my data validation, you realize that I now have my code and my account name showing side by side. Okay, with this pattern, I can now fairly relate the account code to the account name and then accurately select the account code. So if you had done this directly, it wouldn't allow us to do it because data validation normally requires just one column for your source. Okay, so with this out of the way, when we select thousand or any code, it would accept it, but of course it will flag it. You can ignore this later. So for our entries here, let's put in the right codes. So sale of laptops would increase our cash. So we can come down here and then look for our cash, which has a code of 30,000. Okay. The credit side is going to be revenue. So that is thousand. Okay when we spend on flyers for an upcoming conference this is for marketing purposes so this is 3020 then cash is going to reduce so again i'll come in here i already have thirty thousand up there so i know that is my cash account code then when we sell i can repeat the earlier transaction again thirty thousand okay going into revenue okay so revenue here is thousand. Remember the pattern, the codes are above, right? So with this, we have our account codes. You could also avoid account codes and then enter the account names directly. It works the same way. If you choose to go by the account code, you can use a lookup to reference the name of the account code. Here you can use a VLOOKUP, XLOOKUP or INDEX and MATCH. For compatibility purposes, we are going to use INDEX and MATCH. So index basically brings the column that contains the results you are looking for, which is account name. Account name lives in TP, which is the table. So I'll enter that, bring a square bracket, right? And then call account name. Okay, so account name is going to bring the different account names. That is my array for the index. 
and then I'll bring a comma. Introduce match. Now match brings my lookup value. So the lookup value basically is what I'm using to search for the account name, which is the account code. So I'll select it from here. Bring a comma and then match this account code with the account code in the trial balance. So like for like, right? So account code to account code over there. So I'll call TB again, bring a square bracket, right? In there, we know it as account number. Okay, so this is matching lookup value and lookup array. I'll bring a comma and then I'll have my exact match to conclude this. Close match, close index, and then I have my first name here corresponding to cash, right? I can copy this down so that I have all the corresponding account codes here. So now that you have this, usually when you are making a new entry, so if I do a control D to pull down a new row, this will normally come as an error because you have not yet entered the code. To avoid this, we can run an if error. So an if error is just to mask the error that we have here. And then instead of the error, we'll bring a comma and then put in a double quotes and a double quote, which basically is blank. Okay, so when we do that and then we copy this down, instead of that NA, we have a blank. Now, if we enter our code, you realize that this pops up no code then we have a blank so that's a more elegant way to present this so our journal is now dynamic it adds on new rows when you make new entries okay so now let's go to the trial balance and then calculate the movements okay so if you are entering our debits and credits how does that reflect in our trial balance now this these two columns debit and credit is supposed to capture the total debits for each account name, the total credits for each account name, if they are debits and credits accounts respectively. Then in the end, we will adjust our beginning balance to get our final trial balance, right? So let's capture the total movements for revenue. And here you can use a simple sum ifs. So we have sum ifs. So the sum range here is for our journal which is the table, bring in a square bracket. Now for this purpose, I'm summing from the column debits, which is DR, close my square bracket. So this is where I'm summing from. But what is the criteria? The criteria is where the account name matches the row I'm on. Okay, so my criteria range is going to come from the journal again. Okay, and here I want to put in the account name okay so basically where the account name matches the criteria so I'll bring a comma and then I'll select this okay so it will bring me the total sum if revenue is a debit account but in this case revenue is not so I'll have a plan so I'll close this okay and then if I copy this down let's see how you realize that because marketing expenses is on the debit side it captures the ten thousand that we have over here and it's cumulative okay so let's now copy this formula okay so control c control v we need to make some edits here so instead of debits we are going to change this to a cr okay so that is going to give us four revenue again i'll copy this down right so you notice that for cash, that basically is a control account, it has a debit and credit. It captures all our debit movements and our credit movements. Now our final trial balance is going to be an adjusted calculation. So here we basically can reference beginning balance, add our debits, okay, and then subtract our total credits, and then this is going to give us the movements okay so if i copy this down that is the adjusted trial balance okay so to test that this is working let's make an entry so i'm going to make a new entry i'll make this j4 okay so let's assume we sold again so this is thirty thousand into my cash so cash pops up over here control d to repeat the date let me put in a huge value hundred thousand Okay, so 100,000, 
So 100,000 representing cash sales. So let's say we sold pencils. So that is the debit side. I repeat J4, okay? And this is going to go into my revenue for this thousand. It pops up here. I'm going to repeat the 100,000 over here and then repeat the sale of pencils. Okay, so I have filled in a new entry as a debit and credit. Now let's see how this affects. We expect revenue to go up by 100,000. So it has gone up by 100,000, increasing revenue. Okay, same effect on cash. So for cash, 100,000 kicks in. Okay, we used to be 100,000 less. This is adjusted. Okay, cash also goes up. So you can download the template. It will be made available in the YouTube description and then make modifications to it. But the basic idea is you can use tables, you can use index and match, you can use some ifs to create a very simple and yet dynamic trial balance and general template. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for joining us and see you in the next episode. Have a good day. If this video was helpful and you would like to receive more of these videos directly on your WhatsApp, you can send ad to this WhatsApp number. We'll add you to our broadcast list so you receive our videos directly. You can also visit our YouTube channel, Finest Skills Hub. All our old videos are here. Please subscribe for notification of new videos or connect with us on any of these social media handles. Thank you so much for watching.